There were civil rights battlegrounds across this country, but few as crucial as those in this state. In one of his last acts as President Barack Obama has designated certain sites here in Alabama important in the civil rights movement as national monuments. And they include this, the Gaston Motel, which was used as a headquarters for a time by Martin Luther King. Around the corner stands a church that was bombed by white supremacists in one of the pivotal moments of the civil rights struggle. President Obama has now made this a national monument too, in honor of the four young girls who were killed. 11-year-old Denise McNair was one of those who died in the bombing, an event that sparks national outrage. Church is supposed to be your sanctuary, so for that to happen in a church, I think those who may have been on the side of segregation had to take a second look. During his presidency, Barack Obama has paid tribute to the historical events that helped pave his own way to the White House. And that included inviting the McNair family to Washington. Well, he hugged me, when, gave me a big bear hug when I walked into the room. Yeah. And then he hugged me later on before we were leaving. But it's for other reasons Lisa feels strongly that he's lifted up African Americans over the last eight yeah. years. For so long, the perception was black was bad. Black people aren't smart. Smart enough, then black people aren't kind enough. And he dispelled the myth of all of that. You know, he's highly educated, he's kind, he's respectful. There could not have been a better first African American president. Of course, many others here have been counting down the days until Barack Obama leaves office and Donald Trump takes over. I believe Barack Obama is the most divisive president in well over a generation. Why? I believe he played the race issue. I agree with Dr. King. His dream was that men would be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. But I believe Barack Obama kept reminding people of the color of skin and forcing it to be a racial issue. I think that's been very negative for our country. Brian Stevenson is one of the most prominent civil rights lawyers in America today. He's perplexed by that kind of sentiment. I think, I think he tried really hard uh, to counter the idea that he was there just for people of color. And I think his policies reinforce that. So I don't believe that you can point to many things that he did that would be, quote, racially divisive. We did have moments in this country, uh, police shootings being the most dramatic, uh, that I think were polarizing to people. But I can't find much that uh, he did that any other Democrat wouldn't have done. Many of us think that he encountered hostility and resistance and obstacles and challenges uh, that he might not have encountered. And many others feel Barack Obama was not given a chance by some simply because he was black. For a lot of African Americans, it's important that race is constantly being brought up in this country. But it was also the main transportation source for enslaved people. Because in spite of the inspiration President Obama may have provided, huge practical inequalities remain.